What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, H-A-W-G-Sports.com. Been away for a couple of weeks with the show. Had a couple of things pop up here and there. We'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, we're back this week, and it's an important time to be back because this week you have March Madness starting for Arkansas basketball. Recruiting visitors have already been able to come in. We're just a week out, really, from the start of SEC play in baseball and, of course, spring football. And we're going to talk a lot about spring football coming up here. All that and more on today's episode of Hog Sports Live. Before we get started, I want to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune into the show on Facebook Live. Be sure to follow the page if you haven't done so already and uh, let your friends know about the show if they don't know about it. Maybe you got a dad or an uncle or something you want to share uh, some information with. Uh, it's a good way for them to keep up with the Razorbacks. Also available on YouTube. Be sure to give us a like or a thumbs up on both of those platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube page and... Um, Interact in the comments. Also available on Apple Podcasts. If you haven't thrown us a five-star review, we'd love to have that from you. Uh, also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. And Hogsports is just $1 right now for your first month at hawgsports.com. All right. We haven't had the show in a couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, it was my daughter's birthday. It was also President's Day, so we had her birthday party. She's 10. Had her birthday party that day, so we didn't have it then. And then I got... Uh, I got COVID, second round of COVID, and it knocked me on my butt pretty good. So we didn't have the show um, last week either. So that's why we hadn't had the show in a couple weeks. I might have been able to get through the show. It would have been a struggle because I get a little winded because I was doing drive time still, but I would get a little bit winded by the end of drive time. Uh, But, man, I I like my lips were all dry. My lip was like split in the middle. I had like this ingrown hair situation going on in my nose. It was like all swollen. I was looking rough. (laughs) <laughs> so I guess it wouldn't have mattered for the podcast viewers, but for everybody else, they might've been appalled. I guess maybe, maybe you are anyway, who knows? All right. We've got a lot to get into today. Don't want to bore you guys with that. Uh, SEC tournament starting up here this week. Arkansas plays on Thursday against Auburn, 10 seed Arkansas versus seven seed Auburn. That's at six o'clock central standard time. Are we standard time still? Yeah, we're standard time still. Weekend, we go to daylight time. Uh, Six o'clock on SEC Network, Central Standard Time. Uh, I don't think anybody thought this team would be 10th in the SEC. Maybe we thought 10th in the nation, but 10th in the SEC. The expectations we had for this program, I mean, we're talking Final Four. Everybody's talking this is the year. It's just been a lot of highs and lows. I mean, and – a lot of it's relying on a lot of young players. I mean, but there's been other issues, obviously. You know, you've had injuries, Trevon Brazil, Nick Smith. You know, since Nick Smith's come back, what have they gone, two and five since he's come back? It's been a tough tough slate of games, obviously, but two and five. But, you know, obviously, you know, there's still some chemistry stuff. I think they're working out. Uh, there's some other players that just haven't been playing very well. Like Ricky Council hasn't been, you know, the same guy he was early in the season. Anthony Black has popped up here and there, but he hasn't been the same guy he was since Hawaii. Nick Smith still finding his groove. The Mitchell Twins, somebody posted a stat, the Mitchell Twins in the last 90 minutes have scored nine points and committed 14 fouls. Devo Davis obviously can be volatile one way or the other and kind of lost his cool against Kentucky. Now, they played a tough stretch of games. It's not like they just had an easy road. Right now, Joe Lenardi has Arkansas as a nine seed play in Maryland. So they're still, I mean, like, despite the fact that they keep losing, they're still really high in the net. They're still a nine seed projected. And we'll see what happens in the SEC tournament. I mean, it's not an easy draw playing Auburn. But you kind of feel like you need to win a game. I, I, they're not going to miss the SEC, or excuse me, the NCAA tournament. But, I mean, last year – most of the teams that finished with a 500 record in SEC play, which Arkansas did not have, didn't make the, SEC, the NCAA tournament. Tournament's in Nashville this year. So just looking at the last slate of games. After, so it's like, like when did things take a turn? Like they played that Vanderbilt game and you're thinking, oh, that was back on January 14th, and you're like, man, this team's immature. You know, you got Anthony Black doing the cry face, and then Vanderbilt just runs them in the second half. And then they go to Missouri the next week, and you're like, all right, this team, you know, maybe bounced back a little bit, competed, lost 79-76. Then they beat Ole Miss by 10. Uh, they beat LSU by 20 back-to-back games. 
Uh, they go in the SEC Big 12 Challenge and lose to three on the road at Baylor. You're feeling pretty confident about this team. Texas A&M, which finished second in the SEC, beat them by 11. Go on the road, beat South Carolina, beat Kentucky by 15. All right. Nick Smith Jr. come back. Watch out. February 11th, lose at home to Mississippi State. Go on the road, lose to Texas A&M. Beat Florida at home, beat Georgia at home. A little bit of a bounce back. That Georgia game, you're like, all right. Alabama, it's like just waves up and down. Alabama lose by three on the road to Alabama, and you're like, all right. And then, you know, they don't show up against Tennessee. And, you know, that Kentucky game was, first of all, the refs were terrible. Like anybody who says the refs weren't terrible is, is lying. Okay, they're they're lying to themselves. They're going through that narrative like you can't blame the refs. And I'm not blaming the refs because while they sucked, Arkansas also shot terribly. They were I mean, what were their? I don't even remember their their free, their uh, layups were were so bad. Somebody said it was like two of twenty. Is that right? Is that even – how do you go two of 20? It's like, let's forget about how bad a, a free throw shooting team this is, how bad a three-point shooting team this is. You can't score on layups. You're not. You're just not going to beat Kentucky shooting, you know, 65% from the free throw line and 35% from the field. I don't care if the refs are giving you every call. You're not going to beat Kentucky doing that, no matter the venue, no matter what year Kentucky we're talking about. You're just not going to – you're not going to beat them doing that. Um This team can't shoot. This team, to me, isn't going very far in in the postseason. They're just not. You you can't shoot free throws, and you can't shoot the three ball. In this day and age, you can't do that, and you also can't make layups. I mean, like, you look at the roster, and, you know, Nick Smith still finding his way. He You know, he shot – he hasn't shot well from three in a while. Like, last two games, he hasn't shot well. Uh, but, you know, Anthony Black, I, if for all of Anthony Black's positives that he brings to the table, he's super tall at 6'7". He can get to the basket. Um, you know, he's long, rangy defender. But he can't shoot the three. And a point guard that can't shoot the three just – that that bothers me a little bit. And he, he kind of aims the ball. It's almost like a slow release, and he's, like, kind of aiming – it's just, and you know, you've got Ricky Council who hasn't been shooting as well lately, and he's got you know kind of a three, a two-handed three-point shot, which you're never going to shoot the ball consistently doing that. You just, you're just not. I mean, like, there's a reason that there's a form and a fundamental way of doing it. I'm just surprised throughout Ricky's career that nobody's ever said, "Hey, we got to, we got to break this down and start over." And really, like Anthony Black should do the same thing. But like, you got to keep your elbow. Like the reason you keep your elbow in it's like so there's not like there's no like when you start doing this it could be anywhere like you have to be a machine shooting the ball you know everything has to be lined up I always compare stuff to golf but like with golf too like you know when you're chipping or when you're chipping from 30 yards out you know anybody who's seen Phil Mickelson's Secrets of the Short Game like you're you're presenting the, the club in a way where you can do basically a full swing and hit it 30 yards same with shooting a basketball. You don't want to be, like, easing it, you know. And that's that's kind of what these guys are doing. Um, you're just not a good three-point shooting team. You're not a good free-throw shooting team. And you can't score at the rim. Highs and lows. This team picks it up sometimes. They can be very strong on defense, obviously. And that's going to be their path. The matchups, playing strong D. That's going to be the path for them uh, if they are going to make some noise in the, t- in the tournament. But, man, if it gets down to, like, an offensive game, it's just – and they've still scored 79 points against Kentucky. But, man, I just – if you can't shoot, what are we doing here? And, you know, like, Muss is getting a lot of criticism too. And is it warranted? Sure. Like, this team has not taken the next step. But Musselman gets a ton of leeway with me. Like – I'm not saying, like, you get just a pass, but, like, Arkansas basketball would not be anywhere close to where it is right now without Eric Musselman. Like, we wouldn't be having these discussions about a team underachieving. And they always have overachieved. Always under him. So, yeah, you get a pass for a hiccup this year. I think he'll restructure some of the things that he did maybe a little bit differently. Uh, Probably didn't bring in enough transfers for as many as they brought in last year, really relying on a lot of young players. 
But they relied on some young players last year. Year before. I mean, like, look at the year before last. Devo Davis, Jalen Williams, Moses Moody. I mean, those are your three freshman studs last year. Which group would you take right now? I know which one I would take. You know, I even brought up Jordan Walsh. Jordan Walsh has a lot of tools, but he just has not realized his potential. And I'm not sure his potential is quite what we thought it was. Like, I'd imagine a guy that was kind of more of an explosive leaper, um, and he's long and all that stuff, but he's not just as explosive, I think, as we thought he was going to be. We'll let Curtis handle basketball. Curtis covers basketball. If you haven't checked out Hog Hoops Live with Curtis Wilkerson, then you want to check out that show. He does a fantastic job uh, covering Arkansas basketball. It's the same Facebook page, the same podcast channels. Uh, it's a different YouTube page, so you'll want to search Hog Hoops Live. NFL Combine, that wraps up today with the bench press for offensive linemen, running backs, and such. Uh, just looking at what what transpired, Drew Sanders did not test in anything, went through drills and stuff. 6'5", 230, 6'4", and 3'8", I think, 235. I mean, he's an incredible athlete, but he didn't test anything. I do, I'm not a big fan of that. I understand the hamstring, but, like, not testing anything. I don't even think they did the bench press. Jaden Hazelwood ran a 4'6", 6", that's 24th among wide receivers who participate, or 25 wide receivers ran the 40. He was 24th. It's not a very good time. I mean, that's not really his game, but still, 466 just isn't good. Uh, vertical jump was okay t at 17, uh, excuse me, at 37. That was 17th out of the 40 participants. 10 3 broad jump, not very good. 32 out of 42 participants. Matt Landers did have a good showing. Matt Landers ran a 437 in the 40. That was third among all wide receivers. That's a speedy group, third and was 6'4", 200. So big, tall, rangy wide receiver, 4'3", 740. That's nice. 37th vertical, 37-inch vertical was 17th out of 40. 10-10 broad jump was 10 out of 42. Nice showing for Matt Landers. May have played himself into a possibility of being drafted. Uh, Ricky Stromberg ran a 5.26, wasn't in the top 25 among offensive linemen. 32.5 inch vertical, not in the top 25, which was surprising to me because in high school he could really he had a really high vertical. 9.3 uh, broad jump, not in the top 25. Testing wise, didn't do himself any favors in this one. 6.3, 306 pounds, an inch shorter than his listed uh, size. Dalton Wagner, 6.8, 320, so he's an inch shorter than his listed uh, size. Didn't I don't have him down for a 40. Bench press against today. Vertical jump, 24-5, not in the top 25. Broad jump, 8-6, not in the top 25. So, really, the only guy that, like – and this doesn't include, like, the drills and stuff. And, like, I'm sure Ricky Stromberg, like, scouts are impressed with all that stuff, how he did. But um, as far as, like, the drills and stuff, the only guy that really helped himself, uh, himself was, was Matt Landers. Man, I got a little itchy. So, NFL Combine wrapping up today with the bench press. I'm not sure if Stromberg and Wagner will be doing it. They've got a pro day coming up at Arkansas, too. That's where these guys will do most of their testing. But I'm always – my opinion, like, if you're going to the Combine, I understand if you got an injury and Drew had a hamstring. But, like, for most guys, you know, if you're healthy, you go to the NFL Combine, do the events. They even moved the bench press, uh, bench press to March 6th, which – like, well, not March 6th, but for offensive linemen. So, the offensive linemen went through drills yesterday, March 6th is the bench press. Last year, they held the bench press on the same day, and nobody did it. And why would you? Why would you run a 40-yard dash and, and a bench press? Like, or bench press, you know, even if before that, when they had the bench press the day before, I wouldn't do that. Like, I think it's the way they set it up, I think it's good. Arkansas spring practice schedule coming up here. First five practices are this week. We'll just talk about the first five because you got spring break coming up. So you got Thursday, March 9th, 3.45 p.m., Friday, March 10th, 3.40 p.m., and then Sunday, March 12th, 10, 10 a.m. That's good because Saturday you've got the SEC basketball tournament. Saturday you have SEC basketball tournament. No, that's not right. What am I thinking? That's not good at all. Thursday, you've got SEC basketball tournament. So, basket, so you got football at 345. I've still, I've still got a little brain fog. I'm not going to lie. 
That's obvious. So Thursday, you've got Arkansas in the SEC basketball tournament, 345, and then you have the basketball game starts at 6. So I would imagine for me, I'm going to have some overlap with press conferences. Maybe they'll move things around a little bit. But anyway, Thursday, 345. Saturday, I've got something else. (laughs) That's what was on my mind. Okay. All right, so just to be clear, Thursday, March 9th, 345, Friday, March 10th, 340, then Saturday is off, Sunday, March 12th at 1010, Tuesday, March 14th at 340, and then Thursday, March 16th at 340, and then they'll let them go for spring break. So technically spring break is the 20th through the 24th, but obviously the weekends before and after that. So that's the schedule. A lot of storylines to watch, obviously. Quarterback, there's not, like, obviously we know K.J. Jefferson, but you've also got, um, you know, the backup job is is up for grad. You've got Cade Fortin returning. Um, you know, you've got um, Jacoby Criswell in the fold now. So, I mean, um, you've got some, you know, some interesting dynamics there. Uh, obviously, the recruits coming in. So, there's some interesting dynamics. you got 12 high school guys coming in and then all 10 I believe coming in for the uh, from the transfer portal running back obviously not a lot of I don't want to say excitement but you know you got Rocket Sanders coming back um, you know you got AJ Green you got you know Rashad DeBinion Dominic Johnson I have not heard of, I doubt he's cleared because he was hurt pretty he was hurt during the season so he's not going to be going through spring uh, Torian Carter did get cleared officially 100% ready to go so that's good news for him Obviously, a defensive lineman, interior guy, important. Wide receiver position is going to be really interesting with the three transfer additions. Does Isaiah Satania take a step up? Jaden Wilson had a pretty nice um, late half of the season. You know, is he a guy that takes the next step? But we're all excited about seeing Andrew Armstrong, Isaac Tesla, Tyrone Broden. Tight end position could be interesting also. Could be really interesting. I mean, you just have Luke Haz coming in, I guess. So, he's the only new face, but we'll see how it plays out. But that's really interesting. I mean, you got Morgan Turner in there. Morgan Turner's coach Dalton Schultz, Austin Hooper, Kobe Fleener, Levine Toilololo, not sure, Levine, I'm not sure how to say it, Zach Ertz. Caden Smith, Colby Parkinson, all guys that went to the NFL, like played in the NFL, not just like made a practice squad, but like played and contributed in the NFL. Offensive line is is really interesting because especially I think the tackle spots, Devon Manuel, Takias Crawford, Andrew Chambly, like those three guys, how's it, how things going to work out there? Shifting some things around. Joshua Braun, where is he going to fit in? I think probably at one of the guard spots. Torian Carter coming back into the mix, four-man front, more on the defensive line. Deke Adams return. I mean, Deke Adams is the first coach uh, to return for his second season in five years on the defensive line. I mean, you go from Kenny Ingram. That was the last year of Chad Morris. Uh, you had then you had uh, no. It's, you, you, so right before that, you had John Scott Jr. The first year of Chad Morris, and I think the last year of Brett Bielema. And then you – so you had John Scott Jr., you go to Kenny Ingram, and then you go to Derek LeBlanc, and then you go to Jermile Ashley, and now Deke Adams. Five coaches in five years. Everybody wonders, like, why why there's not more continu- – or, like, why are there not, like, better high school recruiting <laughs> on the defensive line? I think you answered that. Defensive end, I think, is intriguing. You lose Jordan Dominic. You got the two transfers coming in. Zach Williams is back. Landon Jackson's back. Shad Stewart's back. I think defensive end is in pretty good shape. Caleb James coming in. Quincy Rhodes coming in. Linebacker is very inter- interesting. Chris Paul Jr. coming in. Or coming back. Antonio Greer coming in. 
got Jordan Crook, who I think is real intriguing. Manny Powell is another guy who's intriguing. Caden Henley also. Could use another veteran linebacker. I mean, we're looking ahead to May for the next transfer portal window. And then the secondary, I think, is overall intriguing. Safety, cornerback, with Deron Wilson, Marcus Woodson, of course, Travis Williams' is new defense, but Woodson and Deron Wilson back there. Special teams, not much to talk about on special teams. Arkansas hasn't been good on special teams in a long – Arkansas has not had a complete special teams unit since 2011. Think about this. Think about 2011. So, last year, I felt like they took a step back. 2021 was probably their best year in a long time. Not that it was, like, outstanding. It just wasn't a detriment to the team like it has been. And there have been, been some parts that have, you know, been good here and there. But, like, you had that long stretch – from since 2011, since they had a punt return for a touchdown. You know, like that's a long stretch without a return for a touchdown. But, um, you know, you look at that 2011 team, you had Dennis Johnson returning kickoffs. I think he's the all time, yeah, he's the all time SEC all time leader on kickoff return yardage. And that'll probably never been broken because of the rules that they've changed over the years. Uh, you had Joe Adams, he had four punt returns for touchdowns that year. You had Zach Hawker. Dylan Breeding. Dylan Breeding led the SEC in punting yardage. I mean, that's a complete special teams unit. It'd be nice to get back to something like that, wouldn't it? But they just have not been good in a long time on special teams. Appreciate everybody bearing with me. I'm kind of getting back into the groove a little bit. I mean, last week I was down. Like, it's almost like last week just didn't happen for me. I just lost a week while everybody kept going, so I feel very behind. <laughs> All right, we're going to get to Danny West just to talk a little bit about recruiting because, as we stated, visitors can come in town now. We're also going to have Keith Grace, and he's got some interesting stuff to talk about too. Um, but we're going to get to Danny West first. Those of you who don't follow Danny, you can follow him at Danny West 24-7 on Twitter. He's the Hog Sports Recruiting Analyst and is just fantastic at what he does. And – they had a lot of really nice visitors in this weekend after a month-long dead period in February. Danny, how's What's it going? Up, man? Oh, not much. Just kind of getting back into the swing, knocking off a little bit of rust. It's been obvious. Yep. The show has not been very good so far. I'm just stum- <laughs> just stumbling over myself. And I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah, you're right. Appreciate you. No, <laughs> Thanks for the support, Danny. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't watch this show. What you got? <laughs> well, Danny, um, obviously – Things change, and if you know, if I was going to get COVID last week was the week to get it because uh, that's right. Things have uh, really taken off, not just for you and recruiting, but spring football starting, and you know, mm-hmm. March Madness for basketball, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, just wanted to talk about this re- recruiting weekend because they had a lot. I mean, what they have a couple dozen players in um, a few dozen, I would say. A few dozen, um, okay. Yeah, not all of them are. You know, I don't want to. Um, hurt anybody's feelings or anything not everybody's a a notable four-star type recruit we Mm -hmm. all know that but so a lot of times you know the numbers can be a little bit deceiving but man it was a good group i I, i'm not gonna hate on them stars in here kj bolden Mm -hmm. we don't see very many five stars around here trey so that was that was cool uh buford georgia five-star athlete we're calling him a safety kj bolden as good as anybody i think he's number two overall in the country and again, man, anytime that happens around Arkansas, it, it's a big deal. So uh, Steve Wolfong had a really good uh, recap on his visit there on Hog Sports. Uh, you had K.D. Dodson, four-star defensive back, Duncanville, Texas, uh, another four-star corner, and Jaden Allen out of Aledo, Texas. He actually came up, got offered. He set an official visit for June 17th. So that one Man, that, that happened rather quickly. And, of course, he's teammates with a three-star corner in Chris Johnson of Aledo, Texas. And uh, I would fully expect Chris will be back as well for an official probably sometime in, in June as well. Then you had LSU commitment, four-star linebacker out of Humble, Texas. That's uh, Xavier Atkins. You know, he's still committed to LSU, has been since, I want to say, last July. So quite a while now, but. Man, just rereading some of his comments from the weekend, I think it's real. You know, he's uh, he's not a Louisiana kid, so you've got that, I guess, to your advantage. He is committed to LSU, and 
obviously they've got a lot going for them under coach Kelly at, at this point, but man, it just seems like uh, Travis Williams is, is in there for Xavier. So probably one to keep an eye on there. It's been interesting to me uh, and I'll get to a few more of these names, but just looking at the linebacker uh, when anytime a new staff takes over, you kind of, uh, what are the trends, where are they recruiting and what type of player and, um, you know, under Michael Scherer and, and, and Coach Odom, everybody was 6'4", 250, it seemed like, at linebacker, you mm-hmm. know. And, and now it's kind of going back the other way. Everybody's more 6'1", 205, 210. I know people feel different ways about that, but the guy can really run. Uh, he's clocked unofficial 4'4s four before, so uh, speed's the name of the game in the SEC, as is size. You need both, but this guy is really good. So just kind of an observation there. You had Brian Huff. A uh, big-time linebacker in his own right. He's a four-star by a couple of services out there. We've got him as a three, and, and hopefully he can he can move up. But uh, Brian was back on campus. C.J. Brown from up here at Bentonville, a three-star receiver. Uh, both those guys still going to take several more trips. But uh, And that's just the 2024s, Trey. I mean, some of these 25s and 26s, I mean, you think about a guy like Tay Lockett, uh, 2026. Now, you know, he's just going to be a freshman, and – and or he is a freshman currently out of San Diego, California. His mother's from Central Arkansas. Still got family all over Central Arkansas. She graduated from Bologna, uh, I want to say. So a lot of ties there. We, it's been a while since we've seen a kid come in with Arkansas ties, an out-of-state kid, and and that you know actually um, you know turn out for Arkansas mm-hmm. to Arkansas's advantage. So maybe that's one in a couple of years from now we'll look back on and say good idea getting him on campus early but some of these underclassmen are as good as as i've seen arkansas recruit or get visits from this early in the process so that's a good sign obviously 2025 uh, we got to mention grayson wilson from cac the quarterback there within the state here he was back up here visited in uh, late january shortly after coach enos got here i want to say and uh, they didn't pull the trigger then. He got him back on campus this weekend and, and obviously offered grace. And that was a big uh, big deal this weekend. So mm. Omari and Robinson, he was back. He's uh, I think we kind of overlook uh, Robinson sometimes. 2025 20, safety from right there at Parkview High. Coach Bolden has told me for probably over a year now this one might be the best one I've had. So I, I tend to agree. And that's a list that you know obviously includes LT and KJ Hill and all these guys. So he's had some really good ones, and and Omarion is is right up there. He's number eighty two overall in the country for twenty twenty five. And I'll I'll shut up here, but it, it's just so many names, Trey. And uh, and you look up, and it starts again tomorrow. So uh, they're going to be right back at it. Nor real white, a twenty twenty four four star out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi. He's an athlete. We're calling him a DB as well. So he'll be back tomorrow and then this weekend another really good group danny west joining us again follow him at danny west 24 7 on twitter he's the hog sports recruiting analyst you need a vip subscription to read most of danny's content and you can sign up at hog sports right now for just one dollar for your first month at hawgsports.com danny what is it with quarterbacks lately inside the state i mean it, it maybe there was a couple of years where uh, maybe there, there there wasn't one like arkansas caliber and then like you look ahead and 2024, 25, 26. I mean, just like there's an in-state guy that Arkansas would yeah. want, you know? Yeah, it's been – Arkansas is always cyclical, you know, in mm-hmm. a lot of positions, but uh, quarterback especially. I mean, you look up and uh, really the last one that I can remember would be Landon Rogers, right? That'd be the 21 class out of Park View. Yeah. And uh, before him, Criswell out of Moralton, who obviously signed with Carolina and then came on back home. So with even even with Landon though, that felt more like uh, yeah, it was more like we'll bring this guy in at quarterback, but if it doesn't work out, we know we can put him at another position, sure. you know. Versus yeah. like these guys, it's like these guys are quarterbacks. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, when you think about uh, Walker White, obviously, you got Quentin Murphy coming up, too, from Joe T. Robinson, big-time guy there. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the reasoning is behind that, but it's been fun to watch him, mm-hmm. watch him come about. But Grayson, obviously, uh, he had one statement there that I thought really stuck out, and uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, you know, it always meant a lot to me to represent my home state. So, Still a long way to go there. He's only uh, uh, 20, 25, so mm-hmm. he's going to be a junior this fall. So still plenty of time there. But uh, Illinois, obviously, uh, Coach Lunny, 
offered him really early. UCA offered early, and then and now he's got Arkansas. But uh, I, I would venture to say Arkansas is going to be in a really good spot here. Uh, I don't think it's going to be another case like Walker uh, mm-hmm. White. Obviously, some coaching changes had a lot to do with that. Arkansas looking at another quarterback for for his uh, particular class had a lot to do with that, but. Um, you know, Coach Enos comes in and gets right to work on Grayson, and and uh, you're not going to be behind the eight ball on this one. I think you're going to be in a really good spot going forward. Here. You got a good one He'll coming be back in. Again. And Malachi yeah. Singleton also for, for, for yep. the young class, but uh, need to probably really in 2024 you need to bring in a like a, a high school guy and a um, probably a, a, an older veteran guy uh, just yeah. for, to make the numbers right. Uh, Michael Hawkins was the guy that we were talking about for a long time before Enos came in, and then you know the tension kind of shift briefly over Walker White. Uh, is the guy now Air Noland? Is that who we're looking at now? Well, I, I I would think we probably need to mention two guys. One of them will be here Saturday, KJ Jackson. You know, that, that right. might get a little bit confusing going from one KJ Jefferson to a KJ Jackson, but he's a 2024 four-star quarterback out of Montgomery. Um, he's a left-handed guy, you know, kind of unique for me to sit out there and watch him at camp last year, man, he could really spin it. And I thought that day, matter of fact, I want to say, I put it on the, the board that day, the message board on hog sports. I, I said, I would expect an offer here after watching him throw mm-hmm. and they didn't offer the guy. And, uh, obviously coach, Eno's, I think he got here in what mid to late January, he started watching this guy and offered him a couple of weeks ago. So KJ made quick work of scheduling that trip for this coming weekend, March 11th. And then a couple of days later, next week, obviously a lot of kids are already on spring break starting next week. So that's when you'll see Aaron Nolan, uh, the guy you mentioned there, four-star quarterback out of Langston Hughes High School down in Georgia. So big-time program there. I think Trey is probably – Man, um, it's a lot of competition. I'll put it that way for Aaron Nolan. Uh, there is for KJ Jackson too. So mm-hmm. um, I think it's going to require a really, really good visit. I think that's possible. Obviously, with Arkansas uh, having a lot to sell and success at the quarterback lately. So we'll see. After N- Aaron Nolan, I think uh, get through this month, and I think it's going to be a lot more clear uh, mm-hmm. in terms of where they're headed. March and, and April are always key, you know, for quarterbacks. They, they tend to come off the board a little bit mm-hmm. earlier, so you got to get them on campus earlier. And uh, I would say those are the two right now that I'm looking at for sure. What are we looking forward to this weekend, Danny? We'll wrap you up with that. Yeah, another good group. Uh, I mentioned Norreal White coming in tomorrow. Uh, I could talk all day about the state of Mississippi, but it seems like they're putting a lot of pressure there with Marcus Woodson on staff now. He's had some success at various coaching stops in Mississippi. So uh, we'll start that. Uh, K.J. Jackson obviously mentioned him coming in this weekend. You'll have D'Angelo Barber, uh, 2024 linebacker out of Pinson, Alabama. Uh, Zadian Gentry is a 25 corner out of McKinney, Texas, where you signed Christian Ford last year. Bear McWhorter, uh, 2026 offensive lineman uh, out of Cartersville, Georgia. Uh, I could go on and on, but I'm I'm getting ready to post the list on Hog Sports, so how about we just let them check it out there? But it should be another really good week for uh, uh, Arkansas recruiting. All right, Danny. Appreciate you hopping on, brother. And thanks for having me, man. Good talking with you. All right. All right, everybody. We'll see you. That's Danny West. Again, follow him at Danny West 24-7 on Twitter. And if you want to read his content, like the article that he's about to post, then you will need a Hog Sports subscription. You can uh, go to hawgsports.com and find all of that information. All right, I want to switch over to Andrew Ellis. Or not Andrew Ellis. We did want to have we do want to have Andrew Ellis on because we're and I'm thinking next week we'll we'll have him on because we're we're starting uh, SEC play uh, in baseball. But uh, Diamond Hogs coming over uh, off a sweep over the weekend. But I want to get to Keith Grayson because I wanted to have Keith on last week because he had a meeting with uh, Sam Pittman. How's it going, Keith? Hey guys. <laughs> That's my line. Um uh, Keith, how you doing, brother? Good man. Baby just turned eight months old. Uh nice. I just bought a church. You just bought a church? That. Okay. And uh just got back from, from Vegas for the Nike Coach of the Year Clinic with uh Sam Pittman as the intro speaker. As intrigued I am by the church purchase, I assume you're what are you doing? You you turn it into a restaurant like Preacher Son or something? 
Uh, I was actually supposed to uh, propose to my current wife at that location, but um, oh. in Benville. Um, no, I uh, I'm turning it into an office, so it's got a big lot on it, and we're uh, it's, we're moving. <laughs> And uh, it's a huge project. But anyway, gotcha. that's, that's my old life. Well, uh, tell us about this uh, this coaching clinic deal that you were at, and and you, you had a chance to, to talk to Sam Pittman for a while. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, I um, I love Sam Pittman. Uh, I think everybody knows that. I, I, I know Sam knows that. And um, I, uh, I've i been persistent in my uh, that is, <laughs> friendship. That is him. one of your qualities. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, if there's a way to communicate with somebody I'm going to figure it out but um no I I um just went to took the took the baby to Vegas and so I, I actually there's a bunch of speakers lined up and Nike had a bunch of uh, guys going and I really just saw Pittman on day one as the first thing and then kind of bounced around did some family I saw a family that lives there but he was really um I, I don't know I I haven't seen him speak at like kind of the Arkansas high school coaching clinics they mm-hmm. all have more access to him down there obviously but um he was dynamic in my opinion I mean he went over he was able it's just like you would think he would do he mixes in technical stuff and he was up and working with people in the room like showing them hands-on how you know they want to block things up and then um it was he was doing broader things about how to be confident as a coach and how to kind of bring some modern unique things and you better be thinking outside the box or somebody's gonna scheme you up so mm-hmm. and i think you've seen that with some of his hires so um even with you know bryles was kind of on the cutting edge of some stuff and highly thought of in the offensive community and um odom on defense as well as kind of tinkering some things and then um, you know, the, with the new hires that he's made that, uh, I think, I think they're going to continue down that path at kind of being on the cutting edge of football. For those of you who don't know Keith Grayson, I, I still have your old Twitter. He's the, uh, one of the, uh, founders of the fourth and 25 fund, which, uh, is, a, a group that looks to provide NL, NIL opportunities for athletes, um, through charitable organizations and he also is in real estate, obviously, and uh, is also high school football coach. And so he does a lot of things, and he's pretty busy. He's not – I mean, you're, I guess, kind of still a newlywed. <laughs> Got an eighth-month-old baby. You're, you're busy over there in, uh, in Arizona. But you're I do gonna... like to delegate my – I do like to delegate. So yeah. I, I kind of like – I have more free time than people would probably think. <laughs> you also i mean like we talked about some of the things you've done you founded the uh was it the uh arizona las vegas arizona razorback club which one which which one was it both of them i founded both. the las vegas alumni association i didn't know if so it was I'm like a doing. any kind of combination then, or anything but and then the arizona one is defunct yeah but the las vegas one is still going gotcha well that's good um but you're you're also you you've got uh like a six five three hundred twenty six pound 14 year old on your team and you're going to bring him to to Fayetteville coming up. Yeah. So kind of what I was alluding to earlier with you uh, yesterday is just imagine like, if you're listening to this, you're a sports fan, like you're a, you're a diehard hog fan, Mm -hmm. but just imagine being so diehard that you dedicate 10 years of your life to get into coaching, to move up the coaching ranks at a kind of a high division school in high school, just so you can, get the most talented kid that you're probably going to coach in your lifetime to go to your team in Arkansas <laughs> and your buddy, Sam Pittman. <laughs> and, and, and now that I'm a coordinator, I got a little bit of juice so I can kind of hit up like some of the coaching staff and be like, Hey, uh, can I come to practice? And mm-hmm. of course they let a lot of guys do that. I mean, the high school coaches get access, right? They you do. Know, yeah. Buck Willie's on this, uh, on listening right now. Shout out Buck Willie. He's, 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 he's been to some Arkansas practices before. Oh, yeah. So it's not, but it's, but it's a cool thing from a fan to be able to move into that position and be like, you know what? I've never seen the weight room. Let's, uh, let's bring our guy in, and, and, mm-hmm. and maybe he gets an offer. Who, who knows? I think, I think my guy's going to play in the NFL, but I'm, I may be biased. <laughs> you've, uh, you've finagled your way into the press box. You've finagled your way into, um, into press conferences 
uh, on the field at the Cotton Bowl. You've figured out a way to get on there, and now you've you found a way to uh, get yourself into practices and uh, uh, into uh, maybe like coaches' to, meeting rooms also. Uh, yeah, I'll be in the meetings. I, I like to open doors. Let's just say that. And the last time, you know who the director of the Nike Coach of the Year Clinic is in, in Las Vegas is Chris Sinkovich. Oh, the right. last time I saw him was in the coach's office – after the LSU loss uh-huh. um, with John L. Smith as the head coach. And he was like, why are you in here? And I, was, <laughs> and I promptly left. But he, <laughs> yeah, I forgot you did that <laughs> also. <laughs> he, he knew exactly who I was when I walked up. In uh-huh. Vegas, so he did not uh, forget the face. <laughs> you just I have to walk into rooms with confidence, man. Like yeah, you, like you belong like there. Supposed to be there. Act as if. This, this, I think that's why Pittman lets me hang around a little bit because I am confident. I'm, I'm not. I don't think I'm cocky. I think I just. I'm, I'm confident, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I think uh, we share that a little bit. So, but he was. I, I, I definitely want to get back to that. He was very. I, I don't know how to explain it. His, his language was probably more colorful than I expected, mm-hmm. and um, you know, he's. I think I think he probably wants to shed a little bit of the good old boy thing. Like he's he's a hard nosed guy. I don't I don't. He's an old school coach. Mm-hmm. Whatever that means, you know. He's he's kind of a yeller and stuff. And I think a lot of people think that he's kind of like a soft around the edges. Oh, that's yeah. not my that's wife. Not true at all. My wife thinks Sam Pittman's just a big teddy bear. She loves him. No. Yeah. No, well, he's I mean, not. I think he can do both. <laughs> he can. Yeah, he he can turn on the charm. No question. Uh, but you know, you get a one-on-one just talking with Sam Pittman and he's, you know, it's like talking with one of your, your friends, you know, like how you guys, you know, rib each other, or, you know, talk like guys talk. I mean, and tw- I told him in 2020, I made about as much as he did. And I was the highest paid high school defensive coordinator in the country, but, uh, <laughs> not, not so much in, not so much in 2022, no. um, 2023, I may get back to that, but, but so back to, back to my, my other guy. So I remember the name Langston Asante. I am, okay. he moved to our campus from Ohio and just showed up last mm-hmm. year. I played him starting on defense, kind of in a Jordan Davis looking role, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm, I'm getting his airline ticket yesterday or whatever with a, with the bomb. And I keep on putting in two adults on the, like I have her on the phone. I'm like, it's kicking it back. Mm-hmm. It's because he was born in April of 20. Eight or 2008 and mm-hmm. he was he's a child but i can't you look at him and he's six five three fifty, mm-hmm. and um can deadlift 600 pounds so i mean like you just i anyway so he's a 2020 2026 offensive lineman he's gonna be a four star he's he's gonna be you know and if i have any say he'll, he'll be a hog yeah good deal all right, Keith, anything? I got a meeting here. That's why I went early today. I don't think I told anybody when we went early, but I got a meeting here in about 14 minutes. But uh, anything yeah, else you want to add? This one's short, too. There's tens of people listening. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 25 people online listening. Yeah, not a lot of people. I, I, every time I like take a bit of a hiatus and come back, especially you know, like in the wrong time slot, there's not as many people listening. So, But uh, I can't wait to see you at practice April 6th, and mm-hmm. you get 20 minutes and then I get to stay the whole time. And, I, and well, that's in the be spring, the power move. Yeah, that's going to be a power move for you. In the spring, Pittman's usually pretty good about opening it up a little bit more. So sometimes we get like full practices and stuff. So that's we'll possible. We'll see if we can get it still limited back down, maybe 15 minutes. If day. you want to really like power move me, then like fall camp would be the time to do that because we will get like 20 minutes and then get booted. I may get to, yeah, maybe we can like, I don't know. Maybe I can call a play or something. I can get a play in. <laughs> well, if anybody could sneak in and call a play, a call a play you could do it. I assure you. All right, brother. Appreciate you, man. All right. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right. See you in a couple of weeks. All right, everybody. That's Keith Grayson. Keith always provides some unexpected content. Sometimes it's just humor. Sometimes it's something really notable like that. So um, pretty cool. He's uh, doing what he, what he really wants to do in addition to being able – I mean – He's got his hand in a lot of cookie jars, I guess. All right, everybody. We're going to wrap it up here. Uh, like I said, I got a meeting. That's why we went early today. But uh, appreciate Danny West joining us, of course. Appreciate Keith Grace. And appreciate you guys sticking around with me while I knock a little bit of rust off. The energy level quite isn't quite what it needs to be yet. Um, and I'm still catching up on a lot of stuff. I mean, I did a lot of sleeping last week uh, recovering from that crap. But uh, anyway, we'll be back with you guys next week. Curtis Wilkerson will be back on the midweek show. I'm not sure if Curtis will be doing Wednesday, like a preview to uh, the SEC tournament, or if he'll come on when. But 
he'll have Hog Hoops live uh, at some point this week also. And then, of course, spring football and all kinds of good stuff starting up this week. All right, everybody, appreciate you joining me. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time. 